Hi, it's Joseph D here. I've just had another pour today on the 1st of May 2016. I'm trying to make a gearbox housing for a project. That's one I've just poured a while ago. These two have just been poured and they're smoking. Now my furnace is only small at the moment and I ran out of stuff. So I had to do another melt in order to be able to pour four molds because I can only pour two at a time. You see this, this is the gearbox housing which is going to be machined down. If I get the pliers, I'll pick it up if I can find them. <sighs> so I wouldn't like to touch that by hand. See I've got a hollow inside it which is made with a sand core. That was used to create the sand core. Okay. Now this one over here that's the other half of the gearbox housing which is supposed to be just where the electric motor mounts onto you know as it's a gearbox that the motor is bolted to and it reduces the speed of the motor so that's the front that's the back which will be where the motor goes onto now on this end here is a boss has been cast in this the center boss once I cut this piece off which is this piece here leaving the pattern piece in place you see that piece there that's got like pattern going across it that stays now that would be the front locating peg for this gearbox to locate onto wherever it's going in this case it's going onto a unimat lathe unimat SL lathe so this was my original pattern just a piece of wood which is shaped to the shape of a motor and that's a bottle cap which has been screwed on which is the right size for the piece that sticks out of the electric motor which is supposed to mount supposed to locate into the mounting plate of the lathe and then there'll be two screws there and there to keep the motor gearbox and motor attached to the lathe and this is just a fun project I enjoyed doing it today and I just thought I'd make a quick video before it was a disaster I had ran out of material like I said and I could only do two molds at a time so this mold here I rebuilt it again because I didn't want to do it all over again just by adding some fresh sand and pressing it together ramming it together and I took my pattern back out again because I put my pattern in first before I rammed the sand around it to repair this mold so this is sorted and that these are just being poured I'll pull them apart now and you can have a look it's going to be a lot of smoke so be warned again rear housing of the gearbox which is where the electric motor will be bolted onto so we got that one this one here another gearbox housing if I can get the mould apart that's what it looks like and you can see there it's a sand core which you know if I break this apart should leave a hollow in the thing this is where I repaired the mould and I got a little bit of flash in here but nothing serious nothing I can't grind away so this has worked out good, I'm happy that I didn't have to redo it again. That's my extractor picking up all the horrible smoke that comes off this sand. This is, you know, petrol bond sand. So that's the area there where the gears are going to be inside this void. Same as on this one here. So all there's left to do now is to trim this off, trim the, the stump off here which was the riser and stick it in the lathe and start machining it down accordingly now these were just a single runner castings normally I do a runner in a riser but this time I couldn't be bothered to do that because it's such a small casting I didn't really need it but the result has come out quite good and I'm very pleased like I said it's just a fun project nothing better to do on a Sunday afternoon except mess around here inside the foundry shed follow up to what we've just been doing there's the casting of the main gearbox 
that's the void for the gears to go inside we trim this off up to there so that piece has got to go it's got to be trimmed off with the saw so we'll have to adjust this that's the back piece what the electric motor mounts onto be drilled and tapped and screwed you know threaded for screws to go onto now this stump here gets cut off as well because we don't need that now that was just for boring and the two should screw together like this more like a drill gearbox like you get on an electric drill which has you know an aluminium gearbox bolted to it so that's what I'm looking for and what mounts onto this gearbox is a sewing machine motor now the idea of this gearbox is to reverse the direction of these sewing machine motors that's been anti-clockwise because we need a clockwise rotation for the lathe and we also need a little bit of torque from these gear from the gears inside we slightly lose a bit of speed but that doesn't matter because for tending things like cast iron and that you don't need so much speed anyway the motors of the Unimat SL do go a little too fast as they spin something like five or six thousand revs which is a bit too much so this is what I've been doing so far like I said just on a Sunday afternoon nothing better to do bit of fun doing metal casting these imperfections here are nothing serious they just get ground away you know I sand it on the belt sander or linisher and then that'll be ready to work on from there once we cut this off we can chuck that up in the lathe then and then it can be balled out accordingly to whatever diameter I want it to be to accompany up to allow area for the gears to go into and this piece accompanies it which goes on to there like that and it's held in place by four screws in the corners oh, that's good enough probably put a couple of locating pegs now we've just been machining this down and I've bought the areas there for where the bearings are going which is you know something like this but a sealed bearing of course Let's see if I got one in my pocket something like that now same on the inside too it's done this has been bored bearing to go and that holds a drive shaft which will go through here this gear which I've got in my hand will be pressed onto that drive shaft and it then connects to another gear which then drives the motor drives it in order to make it work I probably end up putting four gears in because I want to get it I want an inline gearbox but unfortunately in order to get an inline gearbox you have to add more than three gears because otherwise it'll go back the same direction if you if I gear it once and then gear it again that'll go the opposite way which is what we want but if I add another gear in order to get the off center gearbox sorry the inline gearbox then it will go back the opposite way around again which we don't want so in order to avoid that there has to be four gears in here which will reverse it one way reverse it the other way and then finally reverse it the correct way which we want which is clockwise rotation from the front of the motor from from here from this gearbox here the front we want it to go clockwise so that's what i've been doing Got back piece which we shot I showed you yesterday I've cut the stem off which we don't need that now that was where we pulled we'll clean that up in a minute but you can see that gets bolted onto here like that screwed with four screws probably through the front so that's our motor mount plate motors mounted to there with a the gear on the front of the motor shaft then this goes on the top like that four screws in each corner there keep the thing together as I was saying before I was adding gonna add some locating pegs so when I put this cover on there's two little metal pegs about five millimeter or something four millimeter step stumps which are like this which stick out slightly and the same on here is drilled on this is drilled corresponding so on gets placed over here they, these pegs locate this in place perfectly for it to line up and then the screws go in from the front to keep the whole gearbox together a bit like you find on a drill gearbox well, this is the best it is, the anyway. but it's not 
too bad. I am working on making a bigger furnace because yesterday I wasn't happy. I could only pour one gearbox set at a time. I was hoping to do four. So that's the next project will be to build a bigger, deeper furnace, which I'm already started building. And I'm going to resume back to doing that again. Well, this is the gearbox partly finished now. The front's been drilled for the screws. Four Allen screws like this go through in there. And they keep this back plate on, which is the motor mount plate, which I haven't yet drilled and fitted the motor to yet. But these are the locating pegs I was talking about. One there and one at the bottom there. Now, they correspond with these holes there and there so they act like the dowels so when this goes together the it doesn't move around even though it's screwed together but it has to locate precisely in order for the gears to run smoothly so let's, let's put this down here get a good look at that first hole was drilled at four millimeters second hole is an eight millimeter hole and this gives this effect where if we drop a screw down through there you see what i've done it oh, hold on comes out like this and that screws into the back plate protrudes about 10 millimeters and in there is just an, an allen screw let's drop that out of there again now let's put this together so that I know which way it goes round, I've clearly marked it there by two punch, center punch marks and the same on this plate. So that way I know that this goes that way. Although it probably fit the opposite way round, but this was the way it's being machined round because I've sanded all this round. So in order for it to match up good, it goes back a certain way. So let's put it together. Show you sideways so you can get a good look make sure them two dots line up with those two dots up here and they do slide this together perfect see now those like locating pegs keep the thing together even though there's no screws in it yeah and simple job is to just drop four screws in we'll put two in for now just to show you for demonstration purposes and do them up and the same with that one like I said it's a, on the same style as a drill gearbox now that's secured nicely onto there bad for a metal casting job made at home pretty cool that's the area where we said earlier where the bearings go and there's another one on the inside so that way your drive shaft can go in for whatever it's going to be driving in this case it's driving a Unimat SL lathe so the motor that was going to be, it's going to be bolted onto here is a, just an old sewing machine motor of 90, 90 watts. So with the average Unimat motor is 95 watts, so 5 watt give and take doesn't make much difference. Now, through this gearing we should get more torque and a slightly lower speed out of here. Not much lower, but slightly. Because my gearing isn't that low. So, motor input is here where my thumb is goes through here, output shaft comes here and also spins the same direction as well, it spins the opposite direction of the motor because if our motor is spinning anti-clockwise if we put a, gear, a couple of gears in here we're going to get it going clockwise this direction from this side input anti-clockwise, output clockwise but in order for it to be an inline an inline gearbox like for the shaft to line up here rather than being right down there like this like some motors are i have to put another couple of gears in in order for it to be like this as well as run 
in reverse. Because if I just used three gears, the motor's going to go exactly the same way that I don't want it to go, which is anti-clockwise. So in order to do it, two gears makes the output shaft in reverse. Three gears brings it back the, the way it's going. In other words, it brings it back to the way that the motor's turning. So if the motor's turning anti-clockwise and I put three gears in, the output shaft is going to go anti-clockwise. So in order to avoid this and have it in line, I have to use four gears to bring it back around again. So this is my gearbox so far, just a homemade job, but looks rather factory. Be all right once it's painted. But that's the outcome for so far. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Hope you enjoyed this video. Check out my other metal casting videos and music videos. Cheers. Bye.